Hey guys, so I keep getting asked, um, you know, about all the consoles that I have, uh, stuff like that, and um, I don't know, figured I'd give a quick tour uh, while I'm waiting for my 3D printer to finish up something so I can start on a new video, and uh, we'll get to this soon. But that, this isn't for this video. Uh, anyway, I just want to give a quick tour of basically what I've got going on at my desk here. Uh, and just all my consoles in general. So just literally on my desk, this is one Game Boy Advance, not two. The shell itself is empty and the motherboard is above it because just, I don't even know. Um, I've got this one right here. I did an IPS mod on this one a little while back. It's on my desk because it's the, uh, I don't know, I, I try and keep a Game Boy Advance at my work, or an SP at my workbench, just so I have something to test with if necessary. Uh, I've got the two, technically three PS Vitas right here, uh, two original OLED models. Um, the top one, of course, has a damaged screen, is missing a front panel, and then just a bare motherboard for an OLED model. Uh, a stack of games that I'm going to get to for a project eventually, but you know, we'll get there eventually. Um, over here, we have something that's almost always off camera, and it is usually not nearly as messy. Is rarely as messy. Um, see some projects coming up here. Try not to spoil. Got a PS2 memory card. Um, I've also got over here the keyboard that I did so much work on. And that mouse, uh, I've been using. I've been playing a lot of games with it, and of course, two more Game Boys, Game Boy Color. This one's IPS modded, and then a Game Boy Pocket that I uh, keep forgetting to buy a battery cover for, but works just fine otherwise. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, down here, my storage area. I have another. Super Nintendo game, another mouse, and uh, behind these boxes, in that cat food box over here, we have more backlight kits and another Game Boy Color in parts. That's the midnight blue one. I'm going to put that together eventually, but we'll get there. Um, over to my right here, cat tower and the cat. He doesn't use the tower, so or the scratching post, so I end up just stacking shit on it. It's who I am as a person. Don't judge me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, tools and stuff. But nothing of interest in here, I don't think, unless you guys really like my old wired Xbox 360 mod. But that's besides the point. Let's go over to the other room where I've got my brand new desk here. Well, new to me. Um, just got a couple laptops. Apologies, the lighting in this room is garbage, but that's because it's my bedroom. Um, but let's go in this top drawer here. You can see I've got entirely too much stuff. Uh, all the consoles that are in here, except for two DMG, well, all the Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Colors are just donors that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, they all need to be cleaned up, tested, etc. Et There's PSP in here because, I don't know, maybe I want to play PSP. And uh, a couple of Neo Geo Pocket Colors. There's a Neo Geo Pocket Color in here as well. This isn't the interesting part. Oh, there's also a Joey. And probably a GBX, yep. And some slugs. This is the drawer everyone wants to see. So this is the vast majority of my collection here. Um, I just kind of threw these in here because I was trying to clean up my desk. Uh, but it's just a couple link cables and um, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. And on one of these link cables is my Game Boy Micro Adapter. Set that aside, we'll get to that in just a second here. In the back, we have two Game Boy Color boxes. No Game Boy Colors in them, just, just the boxes. I 
have one IPS modded GBA, another IPS modded GBA, funny playing V1, funny playing V2. This one is an AGS101 modded GBA with a nickel metal hydride battery charger internal to it. Um, you can see that there. Uh, that video will probably be uploaded by the time this video is uploaded, so not too big a deal. Uh, got a couple of boxed games for my collection here. This one is actually really cool. Uh, I forget specifically what it's called. It's like Command Master. Oh, yeah, it says right there. Command Master. Um, Google a picture of this game. There is the actual game in here. Unlike the Game Boy Color boxes, the rest of these boxes have the games in them. Uh, there is a game in here. It's pretty cool. I bought it because I'd never seen another game cartridge like this one. And I doubt I can actually get this open one-handed. Oh, what do you know? Just kidding. And it has all the booklets and stuff. Because I have a problem. I keep buying junk. But yeah, I just thought the cartridge looked wicked cool, so I had to buy it. Just Game Boy Color game. Uh, I haven't really played it because, unfortunately, it's in Japanese and their um, English translation or not, this cart uses a tilt sensor, so I can't really play a translation if I wanted to. Uh, got a brand new inbox cleaning kit that I'm probably never going to use because, I don't know, I think it's cool to have a brand new cleaning kit. Uh, and then I have these two games that I bought just for shits and giggles. Uh, bought the first one and the sequel. But it's just some weird quiz show thing. I don't know. I haven't really gotten into it. And then I have Polarium, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Sapphire. The, uh, actually, let's open up Pokemon Sapphire. This one's actually really cool. I bought this one because it was like $12 or something, but I was also really interested in the cart because it had a custom label on it, and I still haven't done anything with this, but the original label is still underneath, and it's probably pretty much mint, uh, at least as far as I can tell from just the, the edges there, but I haven't bothered peeling that off yet. Um, I wanted this label more than I wanted the actual cart, but of course it was a box copy and I had to do that. Uh, and then, welcome to Mystery Dungeon. I just like the, I just like how it looks in Japanese. Nice and shiny. And then Polarium, because that's a genuinely fun game and I can only find a box copy and it's only five bucks. So why the hell not? And then, that's clearly not good one back in there. It's a little bit too tight. I have to move this Game Boy printer, I think. I think that will solve most of my issues. Of course, Game Boy printer. I need to get more paper for this thing, and for some god-awful reason, I keep batteries in it. I don't know why. Put it in that drawer for now. It's a work in progress. Like I said, I just got this desk, so I don't know how I want to store everything yet. That way, put those two there. All right, uh, kind of got distracted. Sorry. This Game Boy Advance is a. Uh, this is that Taobao IPS kit that came out way before the Funny Playing IPS kits. Uh, when I originally did the install, I, think I did it in one of these color Game Boy Advances, but I ended up transferring it over to this because this looked cooler. Um, Game Boy Advances. So, this is stock, this is stock, just limited edition. Uh, all of these are um, OEM. There's no aftermarket shells on any of these Game Boys. I just like having a completely bone stock example. Um, I was going to mod this eventually. I haven't really gotten around to it. This one, is this the one I think it, nope, that's another stock one. This one is the cool one. This is an Afterburner Game Boy Advance, and it has the dial for brightness. It's basically just a front light kit. This was popular way before the um, AGS-101 mods. In fact, I think this even came out before the AGS-101 did. Uh, there's a bone stock Celebi edition for those who might have got mad that I 
modded that one. I actually have a clean one. Uh, uh, another bone stock Suicune edition with a battery cover. Thanks to a member of the Game Boy Discord for that. I've got two of uh, my favorite edition here, the Latios Latios Game Boy Advance, and it feels like there's batteries in this. Yes, there are. That's not supposed to be there. Now there's no batteries in this. And then um, the other one here is just a cleaner example of that, and I have a Goodwill price tag on it for shits and giggles because I think it's hilarious. Those that don't know, these things regularly go for significantly more than fifteen dollars. Uh, Game Boy Light works perfectly fine, but it's seen better days. And then my Game Boy Colors here, uh, and two Game Boy Pockets. This one, of course, is aftermarket. This is that um, Midwest Embedded one that I did a video a while ago on. Uh, this one's got a McWill backlight kit in it. Aside from this one, the rest of these are all OEM. This one has my Freckle Shack, and of course, mirror lens. This one has the one chip, quote unquote, uh, all in one backlight kit, whereas the other original ones were like the high vision backlight kit. Um, this is the one that doesn't drop frames, regardless. Moving on. This Game Boy Color is the uh, Taobao IPS mod. That reflection's interesting. Uh, same as this one here. It's, they're really nice mods, uh, if not a bit hard to get and overpriced, uh, but with the new IPS mods, I don't recommend them at all. Um, I don't know. They're still really cool. I'm not going to get rid of my Game Boy just because, though. So, this one is actually stock, unmodified. It's just a really clean Pokemon Center Game Boy Color. This one, I found out, is not the uh, Ocean Blue Game Boy Color. It's actually the Lost and Limited Game Boy Color. And um, I got this thing in tremendously rough shape. Uh, I managed to get it working. Uh, I had... As you can see from the motherboard, there was uh, quite a bit of cleanup required. Uh, I'm actually probably going to end up swapping out the motherboard with one of the ones in this drawer. One of those back there, just because I don't think that looks really good in this case. And even this one in particular, you can see the wires on the speaker are new. The speaker itself is new. There's this little blue wire right there that I had to run. That's a bodge wire to fix some of the corrosion. Um, it works perfectly fine, but it's not good. It's not great. All right. Oh, that's backwards. Yeah. Next, we have another backlit Game Boy Pocket. This one is using that high vision kit. There's no batteries in it, of course. But um, this one does end up dropping frames. But I mean, I'm not going to get rid of it just because. And then a perfectly stock, well-loved Game Boy Pocket that, if I can, I'm never going to clean up and uh, never going to mod. I don't know. I just it has a lot of character. I don't want to. I don't want to take that away. You know. And of course, it does work fine. Next, whole list of Game Boy Advance SP consoles, because I'm sure that's bugging someone. Um, all of these have had their batteries removed because I'm trying not to store things with batteries in them. So, as you can see, nothing. Every single one of them. Um, so I've got two limited edition Famicom GBA SPs. I did actually have one of these listed for sale, but I got no bites on that. I haven't relisted it yet. Um, stock black GBA SP 001. Of course, these are... Except for these last two, these are all 001s zero, zero here. Uh, none of these are modified. Uh, this one I also had listed for sale. No bites on that one either, but whatever. They're just 001s. Zero, zero two silvers. Uh, one of them I was testing a uh, screw mod that I was working on, but that didn't really... That didn't... It was entirely too much effort for 
for the results that I got, so I didn't actually ever bother posting that video. And then I ended up finding screws that fit better anyway, so whatever. And as you can see, that's what the screw's supposed to look like. And yes, I know that this is a US sticker on a Japanese console. I was going to swap out this sticker too at some point. And uh, just pretend this was a US one, because it's really clean platinum. And platinum was my first GBA SP. Um, next up we have this aqua blue slash surf blue or man up Christ let me start over so this is the um, in Japanese the color is mana blue everywhere else I believe it was released as either ocean blue or surf blue I can't remember uh, but it's the exact same color as the mana blue one I really I just I love the color here it is compared to a um, um, the regular blue, it's a lot lighter, and here it is compared to a pearl blue, sorry, the top is black, so compare the black, or the back, it's a little bit darker, and you'll have to forgive the lighting, we're just using the flash from my phone here, um, I don't know, I, I like the color better, I really like it, it's probably one of my favorite OEM colors, um, next up, just a blue, parts unit that I haven't gotten around to using as parts yet. Works perfectly fine, but it is, it's in rough shape. It's seen better days, and I don't know what it is with these uh, rubber pads. They're like really mushy, I guess. I haven't seen that before. All of them are like that on this Game Boy. Anyway, getting distracted. I have a perfectly stock Onyx, Onyx? Yeah, Graphite. This one's Onyx. This one's Graphite. Uh, AGS-101, the uh, original backlit one. I got this one, man, I got a, this one for a steal. Um, but I, I, this is one of the first few Game Boy Advance consoles I picked up when I was starting out my collection. I don't know what's up with this one. I haven't seen another console that clicks this loudly when you open and close it. I mean, I personally, I like it. It feels really nice. Um, but I just, I haven't seen another console that does that. So I don't know what's up with this one. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. You know, maybe the rest of mine are just so broken in. But whatever. I love, I love it. Uh, this one... This one, <laughs> I got for pretty much the same price as that one, except this one was really busted up. The uh, top shell was actually broken off. I ended up swapping that out with an aftermarket panel, and um, the stickers are all original on both of these, by the way. And uh, I don't know, I swapped it out with a black piece because I didn't have another pearl blue and it was broken, so I didn't really know what else to do. Uh, but now that those clear shells have come out, maybe I'll swap it out with a clear one. But I also swapped out the buttons because I, I think the black on the pearl blue looks really nice. But anyway, just another stock AGS-101. So that's what I got in my big drawer. Lots of consoles. Um, most of them are unmodded, but let's see if we can't fix that. And drop these back in there. Oh, and then up on on top of my desk, which is where this was, uh, just the one console that I've actually been playing on. This is the one that I did the battery mod on, but there's videos for that. You can go watch that if you want to learn more about it. Actually, no, we'll talk real quick. So this thing has more mods, I think, than any of my other consoles because it has the battery mod, the charge port mod, the headphone port mod. Uh, I'm going to count the backlight the backlit screen has three separate mods because first off, this is for a Game Boy Advance, not a Game Boy Advance SP. Then it's a mod it in itself because it's a backlit screen in the uh, one zero or zero zero one, which that's not the original label, so whatever. And then of course I have the uh, Game Boy Advance uh, lens on it, plus the uh, volume wheel here and case mod, and uh, still works fine, but. I think that's the most modded console that I have at this point. Anyway, last drawer. 
So in here I have all of my rechargeable consoles and again like like the trend the batteries have been removed in all of these so that's not gonna boot up no matter how much I try it. Uh, got two 3DS consoles one white one black. I think this one's at the market. Can't remember. Nope this one's OEM just kidding but it's got the purple buttons. I think it's a Japanese motherboard in here. I can't remember. Oh, you know what? This battery cover, that's got to be aftermarket. This one, oh yeah, this is the aftermarket one. Goodness, I couldn't even tell. But it has the USB Type-C port mod on it. So yeah, this is the aftermarket one with a Japanese motherboard. And then this one's just a bone stock Japanese unit. And three regular DS consoles. One original white. Whoops. Dropping everything. This blue one that has a uh, black upper half and white buttons because why not? And then a nicely stock platinum one with little black rubber stoppers because I lost the other ones. Oh, look, another 3DS. I'm sorry. There are three. 3DS consoles. And then down here is a regular DSi Game Boy Macro that I had made. Uh, apparently, until I made this one, there were no other DSi macros. I never actually bothered installing custom firmware on this, so it's pretty much useless, but as a proof of concept, it does work if there were a battery in it. And here is a DSi XL. The red one, the battery again, but super clean. Set that down there. Um, my boxy pixel Game Boy Macro, still no batteries. Two more PSPs. This is in a case, by the way, but the PSP itself is mounted. It's got the red buttons with the blue face plate and uh, the red rear. Transparent blue 2DS, unmodified. One of the shoulder buttons I still need to fix. Here, it like clicks really loud the first time. It works, it's just way easier than it's supposed to be. And last but not least, I have a regular DS Lite. I can get this open with one hand, which I really don't think I can. Yep. I'm going to try the other hand at least. There we go. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to set the phone down. Okay. So, this is my main DS Lite console here. This one actually does have batteries in it because I do actually play this. I've got Pokemon Pearl in a clear shell because it's cool. Why not? Uh, my Easy Flash 3-in-1 Platinum Heart Gold Leaf Green. But uh, let's open this bad boy up. We got Machine Aluminum Buttons. Thanks again, Game Boy Discord. Someone hooked me up with those. Super legit. I love them. They look so cool. Uh, but, yeah. Last but not least, these three cases, which I'm sure they're wondering. That says funny playing Game Boy Advance, but that's not what this is. That is one Game Boy Micro, uh, 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 my uh, US model, surprisingly clean, I got this on Craigslist for 30 bucks. Keep an eye out, deals pop up on occasion. I don't think I'm ever going to get that lucky again, but whatever. Uh, next is something I bought on J4U, judging by the case, you'd be right to guess it's another Game Boy Micro. This one was broken quote unquote, it just needed a battery. The original face plate's up there and then I got a uh, aftermarket one on it because I like the player too. I'm not gonna close that up with one hand because I don't wanna accidentally damage the face plate. And uh, I'll close it later. Last one, third game of the micro. I actually have four micros. But the other one's in pieces right now. I'm waiting on work. This is my other 
the micro that I used to use constantly. It's a Japanese one. There's a big old dent that I had to pound out when I got it. And yeah, you can tell I use this one more frequently because of the wear on the faceplate. But I don't know. I have a thing for these Evangelion faceplates, but apparently they were a limited time thing. And by the way, they're just stickers. They're not actual full faceplates. So I have stickers stuck on faceplates. Um, apparently they were a limited time thing. I ask the vendor and they don't make them anymore, which I think is super shitty, but it is what it is. All right, one more thing. I've got this ammo case here in front of my bookshelf with my Mole Ninja shit. And uh, I'm gonna populate that shelf eventually with all my games instead of my entire collection. But I, oh, there's another console I forgot about. There's a boxed Japanese pink GBA SP. The SP's in there with no battery, of course. Um, but I'm gonna put my games up there eventually when I figure out how I wanna store them. Box for the cat to be a cat, and then back to this ammo case. In here is where I keep all of my consoles that do not have removable batteries, and then the batteries themselves. So this has got a shitload of batteries here. Can't get it with one hand. But yeah, you can see tons and tons and tons of batteries. We have my micro, DS, 3DS, SP, mostly SP. But in here we have that uh, Cerakoted Game Boy Color in a boxy pixel shell with the internal battery. Alright, so there's that thing here. Uh, next we've got two more Game Boy Pockets, we'll come back to that. This is my actual original Game Boy Advance SP that I've had since back in the day. Uh, it's been with me quite a while. It's also got quite a few mods themselves. I haven't actually done any videos on this Game Boy Advance, I don't think. But it has a super, super thick 2000 milliamp hour battery with an extended battery door that I made. Uh, a micro USB charge port, that's how you can tell how old this mod is because it's not USB Type-C. And um, the brightness itself on this thing has been modified. So it is a little bit brighter than a stock 001, but you can't really tell just from this video. Anyway, that's in here. There's another Game Boy Macro. This one almost dropped. The screen itself has the shit scratched out of it. That's one of the downsides of taking off the touch screen is you got the bare LCD and fortunately that's scratched. This one has the same big battery mod with a big battery door. The charge port is over here because I had to put in a separate charger after stripping the charge circuit out of this one for parts to fix an actual DS Lite. Uh, of course it works fine as is but I suppose it's less than ideal. And then take this out of here. Another funny playing case. I don't know, I like these cases. This is my other boxy pixel mod here. Uh, this is an AGS 101 mod with the uh, Aurora ribbon cable for uh, increased brightness. Or what, how does it work? I can't remember. I think it's select and shoulder buttons. One of these two. Well, I think I need two hands to operate that properly, but it does have brightness control and um, I don't really like this case. There's nothing wrong with it per se. It does work. I just, I don't like the feel of it compared to the Game Boy Color one, but battery's not removable, so into the, into the case it goes. Oh hey, there's a game in there. Forgot about that. That's convenient. Oh, last but not least, two consoles here. This is a backlit and biverted Game Boy. Oh, there's another game. I've been, I've been looking for this. Um, well, I suppose I could leave that in there for the time being. 
boot it up. Oops. Thought I did a pretty decent job, at least at the time. Um, of course, there's a line going straight down the middle of the screen, so it didn't turn out that well. But. I don't know. I thought it looked pretty cool. This one, of course, has a rechargeable mat battery mod, so that's why it's in the case. The glass lens, so I shouldn't throw that around. This one, I need to actually take apart and work on a little bit. This is a Raspberry Pi handheld. As you can see, the battery is not in the battery compartment. But, I don't know. It's cool. It works fine, mostly. Uh, I need to swap out the volume potentiometer with one that is actually designed to work in this thing. Uh, I need to do something about that speaker rolling around and I need to actually get the screen adhered down so it doesn't move around as much. And I can put the lens back on. Uh, otherwise it does work fine. Just, I don't know, not really my thing normally. Okay. Last but not least, we are going into my closet here. We're going to rifle through my drawers. So I've got up here a uh, case that I've had for a very long time. Uh, in here, just a couple games, um, reproduction games, and a game shark, I think. But I need two hands for this. <laughs> Oh, and my Game Shark. Two wireless adapters. Hey, look, another link cable. I was wondering where that went. And a few Pokemon games. And in here, some Game Shark codes. And then some. That Fire Red is actually an original cart, but then there's those three reproductions flashed with the um, Pokemon distribution ROMs. Works fine. The uh, Fire Red has the. Uh, new distribution save flash to it. So if you boot that up, you can trade just the box itself is full of Mews, so you can trade them away or just play with a bunch of Mews if you want. I'll close that later. So, top drawer, we have all my Game Boy games, and sorry, it doesn't actually open all the way, I have to twist over. Um, this is what I want to put on that shelf over there eventually. Uh, they're sorted, not in a conceivable manner, but, well, no, that's not true. These are all my RPGs and stuff, and most of them are Pokemon, but stuff like Dragon Warrior Masters, Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda, <laughs> Crystals, Imagination, I think that's not where that goes, but whatever, that's fine. Um, more like arcade type games, Bad and Red, F1 Race, Killer Instinct, Golf, uh, Bomberman. There's a couple Game Boy cameras in there, another Game Shark, the original Game Boy Pocket Game Shark, um, whatever game this is. I don't know, I bought it because it was a long cart. That was cool. And then all up in front we have most of my custom carts. I have a Pokemon Prism cart that I built. This thing doesn't actually save, so I need to do a video on this at some point. Um, I'll get there eventually. Uh, Cave Noir that someone sent me that I've been kind of playing with off and on. Really cool game. Thanks for that, by the way. Um, a game that does not belong in here, but is in here anyway. It's a Neo Geo Pocket Color game. I've, oh yeah, I've got two Pokemon in here, of course. Uh, a bunch of custom carts that I built. Um, it was my game. This is my uh, EverDrive. Yeah, Easy Flash is in my, in my car at my other desk. The second drawer has all my Game Boy Advance games. But these used to all be in one drawer, but I got enough games where they stopped fitting in the same drawer, so I split them up. Um, a lot of shovelware in here, but there's also 
some good stuff too, like this thing in particular, my Play Yan Micro. Um, Advance Wars, fantastic game. Here's the Metroid Fusion that I ended up doing the FRAM mod to. Lots of good stuff. Third drawer, parts, stickers, um, Game Boy Micro faceplates, chargers, some reproduction carts, uh, more wireless adapters, a lead pipe in case I need to beat someone. No, I'm kidding, that was for a project that is completely unrelated to Game Boys, but I never did anything with. And the original case for my EverDrive. A, uh, oh, this is that Pokemon Emerald that I modified, that I pulled the save chip from. A uh, Joy-Con rail that I was going to do a project with. Yeah. Um, more parts, Game Boy macro bezels, um, my Tetris collection. G4U pickups. Uh, this stuff just needs to be sorted into these drawers. Well, it doesn't really need to get sorted, does it? At least not for that one. Uh, but the Game Boy Color console sort. That's a uh, SP charge dock. I've got a uh, the V1 of my portable cart reader. Oops. You can turn it on. Of course, that has a battery in it because whatever. <laughs> There's no SD card in it though. But you just plug the card in, and it works. It's nice. I just like the new design a little bit better. But it is nice and thin. So there is that. Originally, I had it designed to take an 18650, but I changed it up a little when I realized I didn't need that much power. Uh, the revision of this when I couldn't get this working as it turned out it was a problem with the libraries not my wiring uh, then I made this one which was actually a little bit bigger but it was laid out in a more straightforward manner and it also works just fine and oh look there's a uh, SD card in there there shouldn't be but of course I haven't updated the firmware on this I even went so far as to make a 3d printed case I don't think I ever released the files for it, or maybe I did, I don't know. Also works fine, but I like the new version better. Much smaller. Also modular. But just plug it in. Use it like that. Works fine. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Oh, there's a uh, front light panel that I've been meaning to do something with. I ripped this out of a Game Boy Color. And it looks really good, but I ended up using that Game Boy Color for a backlight mod. So, I um, got spare parts. I got a brand new, never used afterburner kit with the instructions. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the uh, front casing with it, but whatever. That wasn't this particular kit. Uh, down here, more PSP parts, and then all the screen lenses that I have. And then all the original screens that I ripped out of things, like these Game Boy Advance SP screens. They work, but there's like mold or something in them. I don't know what's going on with that. I haven't brought myself to them out yet, just in case something comes up, but got parts. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color screen. And then there's some PSP stuff back there. This is mostly parts. Uh, of course, most of the PSP. I suppose if I get a screen, I can fix this, but I haven't really gotten around to it. Yeah. There's probably something else wrong with that. I don't remember. Oh, cases. A uh, little clone console that I've been contemplating actually modding. Here's the case for it this really stupid like um, LED thing up at the top that I don't really care for. I was gonna put it in a new case but I really got around to it. You can see I started 3D printing a prototype. I was gonna put a d-pad in it and everything but eh, kind of gave up. Got bored on that one. And then I bought another boxy pixel 
Game Boy Color Shell. Turns out they stopped putting the IR window on these. I don't know why Nick decided to do that, but there it is. Got some decals, 3DS cover plates, a big ass USB cable extension for whatever reason. Some battery covers, prototype stuff, and end cases and stuff. And I think that's it. Let's real quick make my way back into the other room here where the 3D printer has just finished that print. I've got some projects there that I started doing a video on, but I'm probably not going to do anything else with. And then this is just the rest of my projects and stuff. I've got keyboard stuff on the bottom, game stuff on top, uh, miscellaneous components, more games. But these games I'm planning on just selling eventually when I get around to it. Three projects here that I'm going to do videos on eventually, but haven't gotten around. Well, the top two I'll do videos on eventually, but haven't gotten around to it yet. That one I started well before I started making videos, and I'm probably never going to finish it. But there's an AGS 101 in there. Uh, in parts that I've completely destroyed, but we'll fix eventually. Maybe I'll do a video on fixing it. Uh, there's a Super Famicom in this box that I'm gonna do something with eventually, and then a bunch of parts consoles in here, mostly DS's and DS lights. Uh, there's also a couple pockets in there, uh, and this bubble wrap is a DSi XL in parts. Um, and then this last bin on top has all my donor consoles. All of these consoles work perfectly fine. They're, I just have them here for donors because I've already been through them. Uh, the only thing is, is a couple of the pockets need screens. And, and yeah, this DMG is just an empty shell. I think it has a front board in it, but there's no back board at least. Uh, these two DMGs and this one are full consoles, though, so I can do something with that. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. Got my 3D printer here. Just finished up this part, which stuck down better than I thought it was, but there it goes. Uh, ooh, that came out terrible, didn't it? Whatever. Good enough for what I need it for, but not very pretty. Uh, anyway, I guess now that that's done, I can go do that other video, and you can get an idea of my process here. Uh, just a quick mention on this box again with all the games and stuff. These are all reproduction games or donors or something. Uh, these aren't original carts. Well, some of them are. That Super Mario World is, but it doesn't work, so... I don't know. Maybe I'll do a video on that eventually. Uh, that's obviously reproduction. Reproduction. So don't don't feel too weird about it. Um, otherwise, that's that's what I've got going on. Uh, I don't know. Thought it was kind of weird, but y'all wanted to see what I had going for me. So there we are. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night.